We are pleased to present from St. Marguerite Bourgeois Parish in Sydney, Mass for Shut-Ins. Good morning and welcome to Mass for Shut-Ins for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our congregation today are as members of the Cape Breton Regional Police Service. The choir is St. Marguerite Bourgeois Parish Choir and our presider today is Father Godwin Obike. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. This fifth Sunday of Lent, like the Greeks in today's Gospel, we wish to see Jesus, and so we have come into his presence. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God for mercy. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold the days that shall come, saith the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, the covenant which they made void, and I had dominion over them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will give my law in their bowels, and I will write it in their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more, every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them even to the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. second reading Hebrews 5 7 9 who in the days of his flesh with the strong cry and tears offering up prayers and supplication to him that was able to save him from death 
was heard for his reverence. And whereas indeed he was the son of God, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being consummated, he became to all that obeyed him the cause of eternal salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The person who loves their life loses it, and the person who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up, from the earth will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of us have a wish list of things we would like to do in our lifetime, places we would love to go, people we would like to meet. We might include on our wish list some of our spiritual desires, which could be to grow in faith and charity, or to be more patient with others. At the beginning of today's gospel, some Greeks approached one of the disciples of Jesus and expressed their wish in a very simple way. We wish to see Jesus. In saying to Philip, we wish to see Jesus, they expressed their deeper spiritual hunger, the longing of the heart for God. St. Augustine describes this desire when he says, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. We also have that longing. We want to see Jesus. We want to draw closer to him. We want to listen to his saving word. Those Greeks, we are at the beginning of their faith journey. They must have heard about Jesus, but that wasn't enough. When it comes to the Lord, there is always more to be experienced. They wanted a personal encounter with Christ, but they needed assistance to get to him. They approached Philip, who went and told Andrew, 
and together they presented the request to the Lord. These two disciples, Philip and Andrew, served as mediators between the people and Jesus. They made it possible for others to find him. There are people who need our assistance to encounter Christ. We who have found the Lord are called to bring him to others. If we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, we should want to share this faith with others. One effective way of bringing people to Jesus is through our Christian witnessing, how we live the message of his gospel, how our faith helps us persevere through life. During this season of Lent, we reflect on the sufferings of Christ for our salvation. The second reading tells us, although he was son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. As Jesus was approaching his passion, he had his struggles. He expressed this in the gospel when he said, My soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. In his great love for the Father and for us, he submitted to the will of God, knowing that through his passion, death, and resurrection, he would redeem us and glorify the Father. He compares himself to the grain of wheat that falls into the earth and dies and bears much fruit. We too have our own struggles. Many things could trouble our souls. A health condition, seeing a friend going through some difficulty, or even the sufferings of others in other parts of the world. We are moved to ask like Jesus, what should I say? What did Jesus do when he was troubled? He took everything to God in prayer. So let us place all that troubles us in God's hands. As St. Peter says, cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. As we journey with the Lord this Lenten season, may we fix our gaze not so much on our troubles, but on Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God. With faith and confidence, let us present our prayers to God. The response to each intention is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all police officers, retired members, 911 operators, civilian staff, emergency paramedics, sheriffs, correctional officers, firefighters, search and rescue teams, and their families. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the homeless and all the people who are hungry, that they may find shelter and nourishment. We pray to the Lord. We pray for world peace, that the world will find a path to that place. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our leaders to be able to come together with a common goal of wellness and healing throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our seniors, that those who live alone and are lonely, we pray to the Lord. Listen graciously to the prayers we have made through Christ our Lord.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Win our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Amen. 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 Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lord Christ. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I love you and long to receive you sacramentally. I embrace your presence within me and unite myself in gratitude that you are abiding in me and I in you. I pray for the grace to go forth with your spirit of peace and healing to meet the needs of this day.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Praise God. We shall.